Are you familiar with using the Family Search book collection? If not, then this video is just for you. We're going to cover how to search for books on Family Search and some other things you're going to need to know about the digital book collection. One of the first things you're going to want to know is how do you actually get to the book collection? And on screen, you can see the direct link. It will also be in the description box. But another way to get there is to go to search and then books, and then you'll be brought to this location. Most of us want to find our family in the collection. So let's go ahead and do a surname search. So I'm going to type in the name Geisler and then click search to see what I find. So some of the first results that I find are the Grunite tree. But that's not Geisler. And then there's the Kramer tree and another Gunich tree. And then the Uncle Genealogist. And we'll come back to that one in just a moment. So if you're thinking, oh, that's not my family, click on the title like I have done here and then scroll through the content page and you're going to see there's the subject Geisler. And so this is definitely a book that I would want to check out with my Geisler family history. Now there's some other information that we'll talk about here in a moment, but let's go through a couple more of these results. So the next one is the Kramer tree. You could do the same thing, click through, and then you're going to see Kramer and a number of other names associated with the family, but there's the Geisler one as well. Now, this one was one that I hadn't expected to find. I belong to the local genealogical society in Humble, and they recently digitized all of their newspapers and submit them, submitted them to Family Search. And when I click through to the newsletter, it brought me to a page where I found my result of Geisler. And then I was a, taken to an article that I had written about my Geisler's, um, jo George Joseph Geisler and visiting his cemetery plot. So don't just limit yourself to searching for books. There will be journals as well. And this was a fun discovery. Next, we're going to go over how to use the different features on the book viewer page. Initially, it was a little wonky to understand and to utilize, but with a little practice, you're going to be able to do just fine. So let's say you found this book. How are you going to navigate? Well, as I've said before, make sure you click on the title of the book. Then you're going to be brought to the book information page. You can click on view all pages and it will always tell you the how many pages there are. And unfortunately, you can't get rid of this. Um, easily, but I'm going to go ahead and expand it and move it out of our way. So here are a couple of things that you are going to want to get used to. There is this um, nine square icon. If you click on that, that actually is going to give you a snapshot thumbnail view of the pages within the book. So then I'll go to the picture view and that's just the individual views of the pages and you can use, there's a big arrow button that comes on the left and then there's one that goes on the right or you can use the ones down at the bottom. Now the little eye is just the information that you had on that uh, page introductory page that we saw earlier and so it's the same information there. I tend not to use that all that much. If you want to print or download any of the pages you find in here. That's what this icon is. But the icon that I use the most is really this search icon and it pops out a search window and I can type in the last name Geisler and click OK. So there are 21 results and I'm going to come down a few of these entries because I want one of a deceased person in this book. I'm going to click this icon to make that sidebar go away and I'm going to use these plus and minus buttons to zoom in to see the information. So this child was born on August 10th, I mean August in 1910 and died a day later in 1910 and this is the location. So this is a group record and that's how you can navigate through here. 
Now, not all of the books are group sheets. A lot of them can be county histories, they can be biographies, they can be biographical sketches. There's a lot of content in here. And as you saw earlier, there was a journal article as well. So that's actually how you navigate in and out. Now, there are a few other things you will want to know when you're navigating and utilizing this service. If you do previous and next, that's not previous and next page or when we had these search results over here, it's not those search results. What it is is when you did that original surname search or category search, that is the previous and next book. So we'll go back here and we have that Greenwich tree. As you remember, we looked at that for briefly. There's that one and then we're back to that journal. So that's what these ones are for. So I hope you won't get confused by that. The other thing you want to know about are these navigation ones here. So let's say you wanted to go to page 275 of your book, then you just type in the number and there you go. You can also go backwards and navigate forward and back there. Or if you get to page five, but you really want to advance to page six, then you can use these forward and advance arrows, much like you did the bigger ones that were up here at the top. Now this is a handy tool if you ever need to rotate an image, say maybe you have a map and it's oriented another way, you can click that and you can orient your page however many degrees you need. If you ever have a hard time reading your book, you can also invert the colors to see if that would work. So now that you know the basics of navigating the books, let's go ahead and look up for a few more strategies of the types of books that you can find. So the first thing you should look for are record types. You can look for probate records, land records, tax records, so records by type and then a specific location. You can also look for specific book titles. So for me, this could be The Comfort Families of America. I know that that's a title of a book that has my ancestors in them. Another one is the Reinhold and Matthew Marvin family. So I can type in that name as well. I'll be sure to show you how to do that in a moment. Let's say you know of a particular church in an area. So go ahead and type in the name of a church or type in a religious denomination and a location and see what you can find there. And finally, be sure that you look for ethnic groups. So uh, Japanese Americans or Native Americans of New Mexico or things of that nature. Put in the different ethnic groups and locations because some books are filed by those ethnic groups. So let's go ahead and look for Comfort Families of America. There are a few more things that I want you to discover. So here's the book I was looking for, The Comfort Families of America. And I wanted you to pay attention to when it says access level public. So what does that mean? Well, a number of the books have been digitized, but not all of them are easily accessible online. So what do you need to know? Well, first, if you see that a book is marked public, the book doesn't have any copyright and everybody can look at the book. If you see something marked protected, then that book is not available online, even though FamilySearch seems to have a digitized copy of that. Then there are some other levels, full permission, you can view the book online, limited, you can view it online, but you can't print it or download. So if you struggle trying to download copies of that book, that might be why that has, you can look at it online, but you can't print from it. And then if you see member permission, have to be members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. That's not what it means. It means you need to be at a family history library in order to look at it. So it's digitized and when you go there you can look at it there but you can't do it from home. Darn it. <laughs> now there are a couple other things that I want you to know about as you're using the book search. Sometimes the book doesn't find everything that you want through the search that we did earlier. So let me show you how I found details about my ancestors in this book. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look for Ithamer or Ithamer, depending on how you say the name. And I believe the Canadian said Ithamer and I found two results. Now, what this search doesn't do is 
um, correct for misspelling. So Lyman actually typed in Ithamer with an A-R, and there's actually 10 results. So make sure that you're using spelling variations when you get here. So I'm going to click on the very first result. And I can see that the Ithamer or Ithamer is as part of this pedigree chain. So these kids are children of Allenson, who is the son of Ithamer, who's the son of Jacob, who's the son of Robert, who's the son of jo John, and who's the son of Robert. So I can't actually find my specific branch. I know these are relatives, but this isn't my branch. So I can keep going through the search results on the side and clicking on it, or let's say you didn't know how to spell Ithamer a different way, maybe you're gonna have to do a page search. So I'm here and I'm gonna actually start going back a couple pages. So I go back a few pages and then when I get here, I actually recognize this. This is my great grandmother, Clementina Comfort. She was a teacher. Look at these great things they talk about her. This is awesome. So I wanna save this page to Clementina Comfort over on the profile page. There isn't a button anywhere on this book section of Family Search to save directly over here. So I need to come up here to the URL, right click, copy, and then I'm gonna go over here to Clementina's page and click source. And first, I'm gonna see if the Comfort Families of America book is mentioned in the source entry. It's not, and that's okay. So I'm going to add a new source, and I'm gonna paste that URL, and then I'm gonna type the type or, title of the source, and then I'm gonna go figure out the page number, and I'm gonna put it up here, and I can add some more information. Always add a reason statement, so I just put published genealogy for the Comfort Families of Canada. I'm going to select what events it goes to. And then I'm gonna click save. And so now, if I want to go back to the book at any time, come all the way down here, view source, and I can go back to the library. There are a lot of things I could tell you on what to do to find your family in the books on Family Search. But I think that's enough to get you started. If you have more questions, make sure you put them in the comment section below. And then also share with us the type of books that you're finding in the Family Search collection. I find that when I know what other people have found, then I go, oh, let me give that a try. I hadn't thought of it before. So be sure you share your successes as well as your questions in the comment section. If you want more tips and tricks on how to use Family Search, be sure to check the playlist at the top. And if you're ready for something new, check the playlist down below. I don't really have a blooper, but I really hope that my daughter's flute playing wasn't in this video. If it was, let me know. <laughs>